Hi, I'm Mindy Peters, the Solutions Manager at SPI, and I am here to answer a very specific question. How do you use ConvertKit's conditional formatting with custom fields instead of tags? I'm going to take you through three examples. The simplest is either the custom field has a specific value or it doesn't. The next level of complexity is either the custom field has any value or it doesn't. And the most complex example I will take you through is the custom field has multiple values and you want to create a scenario for each of the multiple values. So let's get started. We'll start with the simplest first. So I've got an email here and this email is all about the topic of affiliate marketing. I'm going through and giving a bunch of advice on things people can do to use affiliate marketing to build income for their business. And at the very bottom of this email, I want to include a one paragraph pitch for a course that we have at SPI called 123 Affiliate Marketing. But I want to make sure that this course, that this pitch for the course doesn't go to anybody who has already enrolled in 123 Affiliate Marketing. If they've bought it, I don't want to tell them to buy it again. Now, I could do this with tags. I could use ConvertKit's conditional formatting with tags, which you probably know how to do, but let me show you really quickly how that goes. So I'm just going to click the plus sign here and choose personalization. And I want to choose subscriber tags conditional. Okay, so here you can see ConvertKit's conditional formatting. And what conditional formatting does is it says, if the subscriber has this thing about them that we know, give them this paragraph. And if they don't have this thing about them that we know, give them this other paragraph. Okay, so ConvertKit's sort of out of the box way of using this is with tags. And you can see here contains tag name. So what I could do here, if I had a tag called 123 Affiliate Marketing Students, I could put that tag in here and ConvertKit would look and see, does the subscriber have that tag? And if they do, then give them the paragraph that is right here. And if they don't, give them the paragraph that is right there. So for the data that I want to track long term in ConvertKit, I tend to store that data in custom fields rather than in tags. And the reason that I do it is that it lets me store more information on a particular product inside of a single custom field. What do I mean by that? Let me show you an example with this product, this course that I have. So I have this course, it's called 123 Affiliate Marketing, and I am selling it through the platform Teachable. So I store the data for that product. I've named my custom field Teachable underscore 123 AM. All of my Teachable products start with Teachable underscore, just so that they all sort of alphabetize neatly. So there's three states for that field. Actually, there's four states. The first state is just there's no value in that field. That means that person has never made a purchase of that product. And um, so that's sort of my empty state. The three remaining states that I have is that the person is a student. So they have made a purchase and they are an active student in the course. The next um, state that I have is that they made a purchase, but they asked for a refund. So they are refunded. And the third is really similar to refunded. It's canceled. So that's maybe somebody we sometimes offer a three installment plan. Maybe they made payments one and two, but for whatever reason, their credit card failed for payment three. We never got that sorted out with them. So they are essentially sort of the same, they're a canceled student. They don't have access to the course anymore, but they could reach out to us and say, hey, I wanna make that final payment and we would restore access to the course. So I have a student, I have people who just have never been anything, and then I have these refunded and canceled people. So at various times, I treat these groups differently. If I am putting out a promotion for 123 Affiliate Marketing, I don't want to, you know, pitch that product to anybody who's purchased it, who's a student. I also don't want to pitch that product to anybody 
who has gotten a refund on it because they know that that product is not right for them. But maybe I do want to include those people who are canceled because I want to remind them that that product exists and maybe they would like to re-enroll in that course. So this is an instance where I may have multiple groups and I want to treat them differently. I want to give them different messages. This is where conditional formatting comes in, and this is where we're going to use custom fields instead of tags. So let's get back to our example, and we'll start with the easiest option first. So I'm back here in my email, and I've got this paragraph at the bottom here with my pitch for 123 Affiliate Marketing. I want to use ConvertKit's conditional formatting. I just want to make it work with custom fields instead of tags. And so the way that ConvertKit has this set up is it's either uh, they have this value or they don't. So let's get started there first. So I want to ask, is this person a student? We will not worry about the refunded and canceled people right now. So I'm going to say where it says tags here, instead I'm going to fill in the name of my custom field. And the name of my custom field is teachable underscore 123 AM. So you see here we have subscriber dot teachable underscore 123 AM. So now ConvertKit is searching the subscriber for that custom field. And in contains, I'm going to change that to student because that is the value that I am storing. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to paste in the copy that is for anyone who is a student. And instead of pitching them on the course, I'm going to remind them that they can come to weekly office hours and ask any questions that they might have. I'm going to take my pitch paragraph here and move it right here where it says if the subscriber does not have the tag in this case, does not have the custom field student. So that's how you get ConvertKit to search custom fields for a specific entry. And if they have it, give them one set of information. And if they don't, give them a different paragraph. Now let's move on to the next level of complexity. And what is that? That is asking ConvertKit to just check, is the custom field populated or is it blank? And the reason I say it's the next level complexity, actually, I think it's simpler, but it's because that's not what ConvertKit gives you in their little canned conditional formatting thing. So here's how you check to see is the field blank or not. I'm going to change contains student. I'm going to take that out. And instead, I've changed contains to exclamation mark equals, and I've removed the quotation marks student and replaced it with the word blank with no quotation marks around it. The exclamation mark equals means does not equal blank. So what am I doing here? I'm asking ConvertKit to check the custom field teachable underscore 123 AM and see, is it blank? And if it isn't blank, give them this paragraph of text. If it is blank, give them this paragraph. So that's our second level of complexity. So it's just basically checking the state of that custom field. Now, what if you have a custom field like mine where you have multiple states? And if you look at the copy that I put in here in the is, is not blank section, that doesn't make sense for a refunded student or a canceled student. I don't want them to try to go to office hours because they do not have access to office hours. So what I wanna do here is give one set of copy to my students, one set of copy to refunded and canceled students, and then finally to anybody else, everybody else who's blank, I wanna give them the pitch for the course. Let's set that up. That's our third level of complexity, is dealing with more than two states. So here we go. I'm gonna change this back to contains, contains student, and I am going to tell them to go to office hours. Now, I need another argument here. What is that argument? So what I have in here is called an else if statement. So you, the main st statements have been if this, else that. If this, 
else that. When you have multiple arguments, you have an else if statement. So the first one is if, the next one is else if. So it's saying, if it's this first thing, if they're a student, give them this. Else, if they're this other thing, so in this case, if my custom field contains refunded, then give them a new paragraph of text. Here's my new paragraph of text. Give them that. And finally, else, if they're blank, if there's nothing else, give them this pitch for the course. Okay, so I've got option number one, option number two, and then my empty option. But I forgot about the canceled people too, right? I wanna give them the same copy. And so the way ConvertKit recommends we do it is just stack them up here. So both of these statements, both of these states are going to get this. So now in this, my final example, I am cascading through a few different options before I'm getting to that default bit of copy for the bottom. Option number one, they're a student, give them this copy. Option number two, they're either refunded or canceled, give them this other bit of copy. And finally, if they're none of those things, give them this final bit of copy, in this case, a pitch for the course. If your custom field had eight different entries, you could cycle through each option using that else if, else if for everything from two through eight, and then you have your blank state. Um, so you can, you can keep going with this and it can get pretty complicated test you always want to test things and you want to um, if you can test every single option to make sure that it's coming out the way that you expect now this can feel really complicated and so i want to give you a few resources um, in the event that sort of you're having trouble following my instructions or you just sort of want to read through this option number one and these are linked below Option number one is ConvertKit does have a good support article on some of their sort of most common options for advanced customization. Option number two is actually a resource for a different product, but the advice applies here, and that is Shopify's Liquid Guide. So I have not tested every bit of advice in here, but the basics all apply to ConvertKit as well as Shopify. They're all built on Liquid, and so what works there is proving to work here. Specifically in this guide that I will share with you, the operators section under basics is very helpful just for understanding what do I have to work with. And so you can see here, you can see that does not equal that we used in our argument. What if you wanted to use equals instead, you use a double equals. There's a bunch of different options here that will help you get started. I hope this helps. I know that I struggled a lot at first when I was trying to figure out how to use conditional formatting uh, to work with custom fields. So I hope this has answered your questions. If you're interested in learning how to use email marketing for your business, we have a course called Email Marketing Magic. Magic. It'll walk you through all of the basics of setting up uh, ConvertKit, but also really teach you how to use email marketing to support your business, promote your products, and just build a good relationship with your audience. The link for that is below.